get started you know I haven't hit the outer band um, you know we may come down a little bit further uh, I have to say though having this high volume line right here kind of makes me think that we need to take one more long trade uh, with the opportunity you know if it closes below the high volume line then we'll be done with it I think we may have to actually do that um, so again if basically doing high volume lines long I hate doing them after the outer band but I just don't know if there's going to be another opportunity to get going here so it's either going to be from there or we're going to end up going a lot lower and then we can reevaluate so it's kind of limited risk to see if uh, we make a one down one up from the high volume area uh, if we do then we'll obviously be long we are long we got new fibs coming in I guess I can adjust to that and also um, you know I can also put my stop right here now because if we close below that high volume line again then we're not going to want it so kind of has to go so we'll see if we can go at limited risk I mean it's two and a quarter point risk for 14 and a half Maybe not going to go. All right, now we got all new fibs in and we're going to have to kind of evaluate. Uh, anyway, I think it was worth a shot with the way it was looking. Um, still think we're going up. Uh, but again, think we're going up and going up are two different things. Uh, so we got a whole gaggle of lines that came in. As far as the large chart goes and the large chart triggers and the large chart everything we made a great bottom um, we should you know we should see more to the upside here and there's literally no reason why we're not going to go up but again they've been making it a little bit tougher so far this morning on the longs um, but I would anticipate more upside potential um, Again, we need a new bar on this chart for the fibs to kind of pop in and populate. So how was, Gary, you're up 3,400 on the day. Very nice. Not anymore. <laughs> well, it goes in ebbs and flows, doesn't it? With the NASDAQ, it's never a vertical line one way or the other. No such thing as 100% winners on the NASDAQ. You're up 23.70. All right. Cool. And you can see my number, right? So I'm up over the number. Pretty much everybody's, half the people are over the number at least. So this is a good thing. Um, and again, look, we've got really strong triggers past everything. Um, you know, I thought they'd come down a little bit deeper and maybe get down to this 92, but with two divergences up top we may actually get that done I think ideally we'd like to see this area two divergences stop out the last low by a little bit and then get long if we can um, with our market flow chart, you know, it's, it's kind of gave out on us just a little bit as far as momentum goes. 
Um, so the eight three triggers, you know, that was kind of the last little spot where we had momentum to the upside at that high volume line. And again, I think that's why, you know, I was like, you almost have to do it because if it runs up 40 points, you're not going to get another spot. Um, and now our momentum is, uh, it's not super strong anymore. Still leaning to the upside significantly on the big chart. Um, and again, we just, we need a new bar on the big chart before these fibs will populate over here. Anyway, with the lack of momentum, I figure we would come down one more time. We'll find out. Hopefully we don't get stuck in a little lunch sidewaysness. You were done by 8.30 this morning? That's awesome. The buyers are hanging tough in here. I'm not thoroughly convinced though. And the only reason I'm not thoroughly convinced is because we've lost our momentum on our range chart. I um, mean, usually when you lose your momentum on the range chart, they go down and hit the lower level. So, again, still looking maybe for this level. Just not ultra pretty. If it was just up to me on the big chart, it'd be buy and hang on for dear life until we get to 47. Um, which I think, you know, again, that's kind of the operative thought. I mean, obviously, we've got new fibs that have popped up here, but if we do keep going up, there's our fibs. All right. You're taking your profit trader exam this week, so you're doing uh, some evaluation accounts. Very good. We're just kind of stuck right here in between all this mess here at the moment, so I don't have a clear path to really go anywhere. So without a clear path, we're just going to sit here. He's just talking about taking his tests. Well, every every account's a test account in it until you pass it. So this is your first take profit trader account. Is that what you're saying? So you've gone from sim to first run. Very good. You feel ready? Very good. Two green days in a row. Very good. For Apex, when you pass, what's the account to keep the the criteria? Don't blow out. Don't hit the limit. That's literally the only criteria there is. Just don't hit the drawdown limit. And this thing is going to probably grind all the way up. It's not going to be easy.
<sighs> you know, these are the ones where it's like, do I just buy a market flow signal and just let it grind and don't worry about it? Buy a one up, one down, you know, maybe even after the, the one up and just say, I'm just going to buy it because there's no other way to get in, you know. And again, when you start doing that, again, just into a one to one and a fib is just not great. I can't see justifying that. <clears throat> now, as we make it down to our high volume area, um, and again, look, we're stopping out the low. You know, this is probably where the only opportunity may lie. Again, a retest of a high volume area. And again, I wouldn't risk a whole lot on it. Um, if it doesn't go from there, then it's not going to. So it has to kind of stop right there and right now and has to go back up. Um, again, it's not the most awesome, uh, but we're doing it based on the large chart leaning up, hitting fibs, pulling back to the high volume area. And again, as long as we don't close below the high volume area, uh, we should get a little push. And again, the more it goes up, the more we can reduce our risk. So hopefully they'll just give a run and run all the way up. So now you can see we've closed up and <clears throat> again, they got a little work to do, but you know, we're kind of creeping our risk up here less and less and less. Again, as you look at these charts, you can see, I mean, obviously uh, it's just a little bit messy here, but Anyway, I think that's the only buy opportunity potentially we're going to get. And if it takes it out, then we'll probably end up going a lot lower. So we're a couple of points just to see if we're going to keep going up. But it doesn't look like we're going to. All right. We're going lower. That's my one stab at it. And again, that was a good high volume line for it. They started off like they were going to go. Um, again, you know, nothing has really changed, but now we don't have, you know, now look at the difference. Our triggers were well above the high volume line right here. I think it made it a good buy. Now our triggers are pushing down and not helpful in any way whatsoever so again well we may still be going up it's just it's going to be very difficult lunch spread this out a little bit Let's see a little more. I'll turn that off. Try to get this situated here. Clean it up a bit. Mm -mm -mm. If our triggers were helping us on the range chart, then I'd say we're going long again right there, but they are not. So we are in choppy funk. And again, this is the same spot we were talking about buying earlier, but now we've got a red background. Large charts up, but small charts aren't. Uh, cool. Do you guys have pictures or anything you guys want to go through? Two HVA trades. Uh, one won, one lost. All right. I think I was in the same boat as you on those. Carl. Again, after a good top, works out well. 
the attempt to go long you know again is it the best bottom before going long maybe maybe not and again i think that's what i get caught up in sometimes too is you know start looking for hva trades without the best bottom or without the best look and you'll find them all over the place and I'll be interested to see how this 12 o'clock on goes. And like I said on our market flow chart, um, nothing is very sexy over here helping us out in any way, shape, or form. So the thought you know we had thoughts of going long and then now those thoughts are over for the moment um again if they make it easy cool if they don't then you know i'm far enough ahead that i don't want to i'm not going to mess with it too much if, if they don't make it easy You know, one of the other things that I use when I'm asking myself if it's going to be easier or not, um, you know, I, li I really like looking at a 21.3 chart. I think it's helpful. Um, and again, I think we were breaking through fibs, and it was, this chart was helpful along the way up when we had our first trades over here. Um, if you guys saw those, um, there were some earlier ones over here that went up. And then now this chart, you know, to me, this chart suggests that we're going to end up coming down here and getting to some lower levels. Um, worst case, the mid band, but, you know, best case down to 87 to 90. Um, anyway, it looks that way to me. I don't know what you guys see, but that's what it looks like. So. Again, whenever I'm kind of cheating a little bit, I want to cheat with this chart helping me out. And it doesn't help anymore. So, good chance we go down to support, which we have now done. Again, I don't think it was really long trade thought process. Um, I think it was more... Uh, you know, we're in an uptrend and we need to get to the edge of fibs and then kind of start over. Um, so we're at that spot right now where if they're going to go back up, they need to make a stand. We're nowhere close to buying the market. Unless you're going to be very assertive with your buy, uh, buy orders. Which some people, you know, when they get to the mid-band and fibs and it's expected to go up, you understand, they'll take a more assertive trade and say, hey, look, if, if I can buy at this area and have very little risk, it's worth it. Um, the other flip side of that coin is, um, you know, you start hoping a little bit that the area holds. And... If it's really going to hold, I promise you the trigger lines on the range chart will roll over. It's literally almost a guarantee. Um, so, anyway, we'll see if we hit the FIB, which we did now. And we'll see how they treat it. Anyway, for what it's worth, um, the 21.3 21 chart didn't lie, did it? So... Again, it's got one-to-ones and fibs right here. So this chart could help potentially catch a bottom. We'll see. Not that we're going to try to catch a bottom, but if there's a little bit of an overrun of the fib area, this chart might help us out. So anyway, now, you know, again, we've gone up. We've come back deep enough uh, to satisfy basically all the fib areas and when we read our big chart chart reading um, again we've got fibs and we've got large triggers that are that far away 
Um, so, you know, again, this is where uh, some traders are going to uh, look for the first opportunity that they get on the market flow charts. <clears throat> Usually that consists of a white paint bar up, which we haven't had yet, or something along those lines. So anyway, I drew that box based on the 21.3 chart, so it doesn't look quite right on these other charts. Okay, guys, so again, just backing up from the chart for a second, um, we put in a good low, which created the first opportunities for long trades. And after the good low, now we've come back, we've retested support, so we're waiting for somebody else other than us to think it's time to start buying. Um, 94.50, 84.50, sorry was the one-to-one -one on that 21.3 chart. So it hit it to the tick almost. Um, and we love one-to-ones just past fibs. So again, here, I'll just show it to you. Um, so again, this is the one-to-one -one just past those fibs. And now this chart will help us hopefully establish a bottom. Um, and then, you know, ultimately, you know, if we're going to take an assertive entry, you know, a white paint bar trade is an assertive entry. Um, usually, you know, I've, I've added this large trigger to my chart. And I've done it with the hope of slowing down on my white paint bar long trades. And I've basically done two things. Um... Let's see if we get. All right. So I was waiting for one down and one up after a white paint bar. And now we'll see if we get any continuation to the upside. Um, again, we're really trying to buy a bottom here. And it may or may not work. Um, but I wanted to wait for an up bar. So we've had the white paint bar, which is fine. But it. You know, again, because it was so strong down, I figured they would retest. And now we'll see if it's too early um, or... Um, and the second chance at this trade, uh, I've been tracking this a lot, um, is when we close above the large triggers. Well, I took that out quick. All right. I tried to cheat one time and get, get a bottom. Anyway... That didn't work. That's okay. Um, and again, one of the things that I've done, which, you know, I've actually got quite a few of these trades today. So here's one, um, just to kind of give you an example. Carl, you can have it whatever you want. Um, but I've been doing this with these... Uh, large triggers and when we get a close above them after a good bottom um, it's been really good obviously this taint anyway all right so much for trying to catch a bottom that didn't work usually after a good bottom like this and a strong move man they usually do a pretty damn good job of holding that support area This is kind of how they've been today. They've been a little, uh, they've been difficult today at best, I guess is the best way to put it. Again, look, we're at, in a situation where we're outside the outer band. Um, 
we may not stay outside the outer band. There's just no room to a pivot stop out here to go short. Um, you know, one of the other things that normally happens, and again, it's, you know, if you did a trend trade short, you would be protecting against the second divergence up. If we never get it, then it keeps going. If we do get it, this will be over. Um, again, you know, shouldn't call for anything to be over until it's actually over. Mm -hmm. Everything else says we're going to go down again. And, you know, if we get through 65, then let's see. So this would be the end of the line if you were short on a trend trade, obviously. A little pivot stop out of the pivot stop out. So this is the first, second, and third pivot stop out of this area. So, you know, and last time they did a pivot stop out of this area, I want you to take a look. They went up this far. So somebody was willing to buy that area. Um, now we'll see if we get the same thing uh, again coming out of that area, but. Uh, I would expect, because the pivot stop out works so well the first time, that we'll have an easier time with it the second time. Um, and check this out. I want you guys to see something. Um, I've been testing this trade out. So, again, let's just say we have a bottom. Okay, so <clears throat> this is going to be the first close above the large triggers all triggers <clears throat> so again going on the white paint bar up and then we're we're uh, essentially now waiting for a close above all the triggers large small you guys understand this if it doesn't happen then you don't have to worry about going long and if it does happen you know because you're wondering after a pivot stop out of the low is this white paint bar the right trade um, so I'm doing the exact same thing I was doing last time, um, you know, waiting for a one up that way in case it doesn't happen, then it doesn't happen and we can recalibrate. Anyway, this is, and again, does everybody understands because we had pivot stop out at the bottom. This is basically the one down, one up with the white paint bar. And, you know, if all goes well, we're going to run up to at least the high volume area as a bare bones minimum. Um, and then if we keep going from there, then, you know, fibs and we'll start evaluating uh, So you notice the difference on this one, how we closed actually above the large triggers. So let's see what we've got. Let's talk about target areas. Again, I basically, whenever I hit a high volume area, I'm like, you know, I'll go break even, take a little money and just be done with it. Um, and just, I'm not risking once we get to a high volume area. Um, and again, if you want to leave a little more risk in this, that's fine. Just remember, we're very much against the downtrend here. So we're using the, the termination, but we really, uh, really need to see some follow through. So there's first target, which is nice. Anyway, I guess, I mean, obviously you could have second target in there. There's no reason to, I 
guess there's no reason to risk all the money because we still have a lot of resistance in the way. Um, you know, again, are we going to break resistance? Are we going to get to it, I guess, is the first question. We kind of just missed it. Should we give it a little bit of room and let it work off of the mid band here? See if we can get the rest of this. See if we stop right there and then take it back to the upside, get the other half. They're large triggers of the small triggers from this chart. So there's a small trigger and a large trigger. Um, I made a template, Jason, to make your life easy. There you go. You can just, and they got me on that. So anyway, too much, too much downtrend still. Um, you can just open this zip file up and copy paste it into the, uh, you know, I hate to say this, but this is really the spot we're supposed to be long from. Still, and this would have been a better stop. So we'll see if we get back in and get the rest of our move to the upside here. Obviously, we got to get through one to ones and small triggers. Um, always a pain in the ass to get through. So you can decide whether you want to keep risking or not risking. Um, hopefully, they just plow one through. But if they don't, you're going to have to decide uh, whether you want to risk any money or not. Again, I'll just I'll leave I'll leave the stop alone. Um, you know, the other thing, too, you can always peel off a contract or two. You know, you can set your thing to one and just you can take some off as it goes into these types of areas. Again, I'm not sure how much it's worth risking. Um, and again, we just really need to see another up bar here and then we'll... be able to trail or stop so those one-to-ones and small triggers are tough to get through aren't they like I was saying if you wanted to take one at a trouble spot you can always just hit saw one at the market like to see us get through the trouble spot but right, got a new bar up so we've got only a couple of ticks worth of risk and here watch we'll take one contract off that'll make it go up for sure Everybody okay with this? Pretty much trend trade. I mean, I had white paint bar trade and then basically trend trade here. <clears throat> if we, as long as we don't make a second divergence, then, you know, we'll keep going. We're, you know, we're into some trouble. So if you want to take a little bit of money, you know, it's not going to hurt. If they make divergence, they're just going to stop out the low and then you're going to have to do it again. So it's like, you know, what's... Is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Just again, we'll just see how it works out here. I don't know if they're going to make it.
Yes, copy paste that JSON into the template folder, chart template folder. And lower divergence. So they're going to end up coming down here to this spot. You know, and when they take out the low, you're going to have to decide do you want to do it again? Is your large chart really strong enough? So again, there's you know there's a benefit to being a little bit more assertive at like a high volume area so um, you know if you buy the high volume area and it works it looks genius if it doesn't work um, and it breaks through then you end up losing so you know again this is the catch-22 of high volume areas here um, As it gets back above it, probably shouldn't get back below again. So I think uh, I'm going to get out of this. I just It's not strong enough to want to stay in it. We just have a pivot stop out to get to down here, I think, that we have to get to. So, you know, again, high volume area is nice. Um, you know, the other way to do it is do it with a signal. And then that way you're buying the high volume area, but then you get some confirmation before you get in. And I guess, you know, there's a benefit to getting in at the spot versus confirmation. Um, I just, it looks to me like we're a little too strong on this side to, you know, we did have a good termination bottom, which was nice. Um, I just, I think they have to stop out this low first and then. Uh, it's trying too hard is what it feels like. There we go. Now we've taken out that low, which I think was the right call a little just it's not strong enough to the upside to, to say we're going out very easily Hopefully, not everybody's too tired after the morning session. Are you guys tired? Just curious. You know, I can't say conservatively that it looks like a good short. You know, just too much into a pivot stop out. And this time, the small triggers are above the large triggers. Um, it doesn't really matter. If they're going to rip through, they're going to rip through. But just wasn't a real easy look to take shorts. Um, now we may actually have, uh, you know, again, starting to build a clear path down to 925. So when we've gotten outside the outer band on our range chart. Um, so usually this is the spot where some one up, one down type trades uh, from outside the outer band. Um, if we can even get inside the outer band. Um, sometimes, you know, like you'll see Safia, she'll go short without an up bar, um, just on a little bit of a pullback. Um, I'd like to have an up bar, but, you know, you can kind of make a case for, 
you know, a pull back to here, which was the outer band, and then there's nothing else in the way. Um, it's not the way we normally do it, obviously. You know, we like to see, you know, we like to see some type of up action before going short. But do you guys understand what I'm saying about using these prior high volume areas? And you can see, I mean, we just basically hit, you know, a prior high volume area and we're not going to make an up bar. It just doesn't look that way. It looks like a runaway. You know, and again, I guess the, the, the upside is you're in. The downside is you're not getting as good of a fill. But do you guys see what I'm talking about right here? Just once we got outside, it's like, man, you're just not even going to make an up bar. It's just too strong, and there's no reason for it to stop. So you just have to get in, um, which is not the easiest trade to do. But, you know, you go back and study that outside the outer band. Eh, they're all tricky. <laughs> all right yeah every hour is tricky um so again look we've got uh we've got a one up and we've got a lot of room to the downside um if we make two up then you know this is May not stop. Man, it made two up on me. All right, guys. Um, if we get a market flow signal from the outer band, that will be our. I probably should have given it a little bit more room, but this will be our um, opportunity for short. And, you know, again, the only thing we don't want to see is the second divergence. We don't want to see, you know, we want to stay outside the outer bands, basically. Um, so as long as we don't make second divergences or anything crazy like that to take us out of our trade, uh, we should see some continuation to the downside. How far is she going to go? We're about to find out. we'd like to see is one up and another one down real quick um, and then we'll be able to reduce our risk considerably so we got that done and at a pivot stop out of the bottom you can always go to break even you know if you want to take some of them off um, definitely a good spot to take some off if you want to uh, if you're going home run hitting, then you just risk giving it all back. That's the only downside. So, looks like. Pivot stop out so far is causing trouble. That may be the end of the party. Well, that was a good attempt. I just didn't want to finish off so anyway um things are still very downish um and again if we get one more market flow signal short especially after taking out the high sometimes you get a second shot uh you know and again sometimes i'll do it a little more assertively you know as they come up here and take out that last high if you don't want to be more assertive with it you can just wait for a signal
That way, if you don't get one, they won't go. Um, still a very good look, obviously, for going down, but they're just not going to make it as easy as they could. All right, so here's our market flow signal to the downside. Um, notice that it's not technically outside the outer band. Um, so again, this is one where, um, you know, if you're going to do it, you really don't want a lot of risk on it. So again, I sold a little bit of a pullback and then we'll see if we can get down to these one-to-ones this time. Um, the other thing is if you have a, you see these small triggers, right? Okay. Sorry, I messed up my video. Um, what I was going to say is that if you have your 8-3 triggers, come on Ninja Trader, if you have your 8-3 triggers crossed up and you make an up bar and you're inside the outer bands, then that's going to be the end of the party. Um, once they get back inside the outer bands and that signal fails, that's the end of the road basically um, and it's not that they can't go down it's just they're not gonna they're not gonna make it easy yet <clears throat> get this out of the way uh, and you can see, look, here's our range chart. So it's not allowing us to play. Let's go short. Um, large chart says short. And, you know, again, um, it just makes it a little more difficult once we start turning green and we have our small triggers closing above um, I'd give it a 50 50 on if it goes down or not See how we're getting our price bars below our small triggers over here? Um, again, that's helpful. You know, the thing that hurts this is this high volume area right here. Um, again, once it gives way, I think we'll have an easier time going to the short side. You have one-to-ones at where? 940. Are you talking about on this chart? Let me just reload it. 34.5? Hmm. I'll reload it to... We are going to use our high volume area to go short against everything else that we have. And I am going to have to investigate where all these one-to-ones are. <coughs> so, again, if this was a pullback to waiting for things to roll over high volume area at 54 I didn't get the best fill price but 54 is a better fill price at the high volume area right there and again we'll see if they can push on through I mean that was that would be your close above a high volume area right there 
I just don't have I had them at 40 but they're gone now so Anyway, my small triggers have rolled up, so I'm getting out of that trade break even. God dang it, man. My, nin my ninja trader is really just causing me trouble. I don't have those one to ones, guys. I don't know what to tell you. I can reload my historical data. You guys all have them. All right. Bear with me for a minute. I'll just reload my historical. I still think we should be short and short down to 40 and 25. So I'm going to do that while we're reloading. I think we're going to end up making it to 40, 50. We'll take it down to there. Put this above our high volume area. And now I'm going to reload my historical. So this is going to take two seconds. You know, if I have one to ones at 48, then I'm going to be very perturbed. Because obviously that would give us a termination condition. <clears throat> so everything is thinking and grinding at the moment. Give it a half a second. Come on. All right. And I think we can pull our stops down to break even, getting to a prior pivot low. <laughs> so Nothing like having to trade while you are reloading your data. Okay. Come on, baby. <laughs> it's thinking about it. All right. So here we go. It's coming in. Man, it is tripping out. Okay. There we go. Alright, I reloaded my data. I don't have it, guys. I don't know what to tell you. So I'm going with mine for now. Till further notice. That you know, and again, based on my charts, still the right thing to do. Um, you know, if we're going to try to stay in this for the long haul, um, we're going to have to have a little bit more stop. Anyway, this was our high volume area I was talking about on our market flow charts. And now we're looking for more down if we get it if we don't get it then party's over mm -hmm. we've got outside the outer bands again which is good so again look here was my high volume area we took some off obviously at 40 25 and then at 10 points 
And now we're waiting for another bar down. And if we get it, we'll be able to trail our stop. And we're outside the outer band. And if there is uh, trading gods out there, we're going to run all the way down to 26 even. Quick. Super quick. So, I don't know what to tell you guys about what you guys are looking at on your charts, but I reloaded. Ill-advised in the middle of trading, but I did it anyway. Got, got away with it. Ill-advised. All right, that's a little better. And bingo. That's a good one. <clears throat> I do need to redo my market flow chart because I'm missing, missing some dots. But <clears throat> we hit the right spot, didn't we? It took a second to get on the right path there, but we did it. I'm going to reload my market flow chart since my dots were missing. <clears throat> again, look, my large chart was just too damn strong not to sell that high volume area again. And now we've made it to the promised land, and we'll see what they say about it now. If they're actually going to keep going or not. Obviously, divergence on the small charts, the first trick. We'll see. Are you guys reloading your data now? I don't know where my one-to-ones are, man. I don't even see any on my chart. It makes me really... Look, I don't have any one-to-ones on my chart. It's got to be my chart, guys. I don't know. It's not even a data issue. Let me rebuild my chart. You know, if we get this damn browser done and it doesn't have any bugs or any issues... And it does everything exactly the same as Ninja Trader. <laughs> That's going to be a good day. That's what I'm going for anyway. Oh, there we go. I rebuilt the chart. Look at that. I guess I just had an error somewhere in my charts. don't know what it was but even even with one to ones there those triggers were pretty darn strong anyway it all worked out obviously we've got a little work to do down here at the bottom to be a bottom You know, this is where I really like the idea of waiting to be on top of all the triggers. Um, number one, you'll be back inside the outer bands. Um, so, you know, I think we I think we need to be up here somewhere before. You know, the bottom could hold, and that's really nice. Um, unless you're going to be assertively buying the bottom, um, which usually is a more difficult way of doing it. Uh, we're going to need... Uh, well, second divergence. You know, I really actually would advocate for buying the second divergence itself. And you'd have to go long right here, um, which is a little bit scary. But if you've got a really good fib bottom, then buying the second divergence as a signal is not always a bad thing. Anyway, <clears throat> like I said, I'll reiterate it. I would like to see a close above 
all the triggers and back inside the outer bands and then I think we'll see a good bottom so we'll let them finish horsing around down here and then we'll see they may never make a bottom who knows they may keep going down all day what's next 17 8 92 <laughs> all right stranger things have happened with the nasdaq All right, and that sums that up quickly. Um, man, I don't know if you can even be that quick. Um, it's a one up, one down, but man, it's going to be over very quickly with the second divergence, which it was. Um, second divergence takes you up to the mid band, and mid band probably is going to take us back down again um, again maybe if we get a signal from the outer band if we'll get one more push down um, it, nope back inside the outer band all right I guess that was it hm. just that fast again look this is where I was going short one attempt obviously that ended super fast at one o'clock do we didn't have news out at one o'clock did we um and now we're in a breakout trying to break out of a fib um we did break a high volume line um which i missed this um should have been long right there with the high volume line breakout um, now we've got our one up one down situation where um, if we're going to do some continuation to the upside we don't want to make two bars down so if we do then we'll come back down a lot lower obviously if we don't then we'll try to run them back up again less risk and I don't know where we're going, but that looks like a good first target. What do you guys think? A good first target, and then we'll use our market flow to help us out on our second trailing stops. If we can get another up bar here, I'll show it to you in two seconds when I can move it. didn't quite make another up bar but there we go so we got half off at about 10 points and then now we're just kind of letting it marinate and see what else they give us 47.50 we hit a one to one so may not want to I don't want to risk too much, but we'll just let it marinate here and see where it goes. What was our... So 47.50? I guess if we make 47.50, I'd be pretty happy with that. What do you think? Not sure we're going to make it. Coming off of that one-to-one, -one, that might be it. <laughs> I think that's all she wrote. I think is a great term in day trading I left my stop where it was supposed to be so fortunately um, again one more time at a pink one-to-one -one. Uh -uh. 
don't think we have to risk too much. Hopefully we get one more up bar. Um, and should we see if they're going to run it up even higher? Or what do you guys want to do? See if we don't make two down bars here. I don't want to get too greedy. One more little market flow up bar. That's what we're looking for. Come on, buyers. There we go. We're getting close. See how we're running out of momentum on our triggers up there on the range bar chart? Usually that's a sign they're going to put in a little deeper retracement. We're running out of juice. Let's take one off at those one to ones. Oh man, I just seized up my freaking Ninja Trader. Hang on. Shit. Hang on. I gotta open up my Trade of Eight and get the hell out. Okay, I am flat. And flat. Shit. That's what happens when you start doing orders inside of orders on Ninja Trader. That's a nice run, though, huh? We had a good chunk of cash, so I locked in 800 bucks of it. So that's on the second half. So that's good. All right, I'm rebooting my freaking Ninja Trader. <laughs> you missed it. All right. <clears throat> Still getting cold feet. Okay, so my simulator's still on, obviously, but my take profit is closed out. So, I got orders all over the place. I gotta clean up my mess. Alright, let's see what you got. You got the first half? Alright, cool. Hmm. Uh, this is all messed up. Fortunately, I went to my trade of eight and got out at the high. Okay, so I might as well roll that over. 
All right, now I'm resetting my database. So that way everything comes in clean. It's a pain in the ass in it. I guess I'll clean up my database while I'm at it too. Just for fun. You know, the ninja errors that they have in their ordering system. Um, and that .NET drawing DLL error that they've had. I've searched back through their freaking forum since 2012. They've had that error. So somebody asked me today, they're like, when is it going to get fixed? I'm like, well, they've had it since 2012. What do you think? So, um, man, I've got so many people working on the browser stuff now. I mean, it kind of went dormant for a while because we had to redo the fibs and everything for Ninja Trader. And the Ninja Trader version that we were writing we're also using for the browser um, so we're doing something that's really pretty cool we're actually writing an indicator for an indicator that will take all of the plots that we're making in the browser and plot them in ninja trader and we're doing this so we can make sure that we're plotting the same things obviously and um, Anyway, that's got, man, look at this. My workspace came up with no freaking indicators. It's just awesome. Uh, anyway, probably 90 to 100 days is my guess. That's their guess. Apparently, there's still a little bit more work than we anticipated, but... Um, if we can be done in 90 days, 90 to 100 days, I'd be really happy with it. Yeah, well. I've got a lot of good stuff coming. <clears throat> Just stay tuned. There's a whole bunch of things coming that we're doing. For sure. Okay, what a mess. <clears throat> Did anybody go long again with the trend trade or no? Just too too deep of a pullback. You know, this is that same strong look that took us down over here. And we've got the exact same look over here to take us to the upside. Um, literally, the exact same look. And literally, the exact same one-to-ones. Um, they haven't changed. Um, so they're really not being very hurtful or helpful to what we're doing here. Um, so all things being equal, we're going up and we're going up to 74 probably, who knows. Um, you're in at 41 on a white paint bar. So there was a white paint bar coming out of right there. I see it. Nice. Get your first 10 points. Oh, you got out at 51. All right. Cool. Nicely done. Trend trade with closes on the right side of both 8-3 triggers and small triggers. So, really nicely done.
Alright, so that was a mess um, for me. <clears throat> so now, you know, again, do we have another one down into one to ones? Um, type of spot or let's see how we have a short trader up all right so we've made a little progress since we started I was at what five grand and change now I'm at six grand and change so we're headed in the right direction um, I was gonna say we probably have one more up I'm just mentally a hundred not a hundred percent prepared uh, hopefully you guys if you were going to take it, took it. It's a good look for it. And there's a whole lot of room for a whole lot of money to the upside. Anybody go long on a pullback? I like it. I think you should quickly run up to some higher levels. If it makes you feel any better, <laughs> uh, what I think, I, not always uh, what I think works, but looks like it's everything on the planet that we're looking for for more up. And there is just nothing in the way. I mean, I know we have a little pivot stop out here, but there's very, very little in the way. I guess I could probably jump on board with the thought process and keep a tight stop on it just in case they do run that far. If they don't, then I'm going to lose a little bit on a two lot for getting in late. I'm about to find out. <clears throat> Gary, not afraid to lose. That's the operative. Uh, you know, it's funny. I was listening to some reggae lyrics yesterday. It has such a good lyric in it. Let's see if I can find it. <laughs> my wife I sent it to her she's like what the hell's wrong with you I'm positive <laughs> hang on I'm gonna send it Skype alright man uh, there's another one down. E. I guess if it makes divergence, the party's going to be over. If it doesn't, then the party won't be over. Yeah. All right. There's divergence. Party's over. for the time being. Well, it's worth a couple hundred bucks. If they ran all the way up to 75, it would be a beautiful thing. Now, you know, again, look, this is where the market has a tendency to make these little pivot stop outs uh, and then go again. Um, technically, my stop should have been below the low, which was right there. That would have been the correct stop, but after a pivot stop out at the 
at the high. Usually they come get this one anyway. So I, I would think that this would end up being the spot. Um, if it's going to keep going up again, they'll, they'll run up from down here. And again, I'll do this sometimes assertively where I'll say, look, if you get back to that second, that low, and make that little pivot stop out that we're expecting, I'll go long with it. May not even make it. So this is an assertive version of going long that doesn't have to risk a lot of money. Um, if it doesn't go, then it's not going to go very, very quickly, and it's going to look really silly. Um, and again, with a white paint bar into it, you basically are anticipating that you're going to get a signal to the upside. And um, now I've got one and a quarter point risk. So if it doesn't go, then I'll lose a point and a quarter. If it does go, then it goes all the way up, and we say yay, and we have fun with it, and it's a beautiful thing. So again, it's just an assertive entry. Um, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. So, you know, a point of risk. And then we'll see if they can keep on going through the triggers or not. Again, there's a lot of triggers to get through. Um, Well, that was quick. Check out that low and <laughs> all right, that's rude. They came down there trying to stick their nose down there. Oh, oh they got it. All right, well, that was worth one point. You know, and again, one point yourself to death, but it's cost a couple hundred bucks, but so on a four lot net net, what a couple hundred bucks? I think they just stuck their nose down there a little further than we wanted them to, but. There's no reason for them not to go back up again. Um, so it's a tough one. It's like trend trade long, closing above the 8.3 triggers, closing above the small triggers. Um, maybe worth a second chance. I did it on two. Not super convinced that they're done. Hmm. Yeah, they're just not going to go yet, are they? May need a couple more ticks on this, but not sure I'm willing to risk. Cause you probably have to risk to there just to keep it way out of the way. If it goes up, then it makes life easier. Okay, that's a better look. I guess my assertive one was good. I just had too tight of a stop. I, you know, and I don't mind losing a point and then doing it again. Um, by the way, um, when you get to a prior pivot stop out, you can always take a couple hundred bucks. You don't have to hang on for the mother load on every trade. <laughs> Looks like we got it. 
<clears throat> That's quite the little zig, zig to the upside, wasn't it? Are they going to finish zigging, or is that it? Man, I guess that's it. All right, well, that was fun. We didn't really hit a freaking target, but the triggers got so weak, and with divergence, you got you to gotta get out because they're going to come down lower. So you can always get back in again if you, you know, if you want that last little bit of the move, you can always get back in again at the spot, which is the mid band. And then, you know, it either works or it doesn't, and then you can get the rest of your cashola. All right. Come on, little market flow signal. Again, this is that same little market flow signal trick that we were looking at before. So it really has to go up right there if it's going to make a signal. <laughs> and my data froze. That always makes me feel better. Oh, that was rude. Did you guys... uh? data freeze just for a second there all right that sums that up for me getting a little squirrely <clears throat> yeah mine did because i was in at the right spot and i didn't even get a chance to manage the damn thing properly because it was stuck on me that sucks for me anyway hopefully you guys were able to if you were if you did get in you were able to manage it properly mm -hmm. and now we've got the super surprise special one-to-ones mid bands um, I don't know if it's gonna hold or not but if it's going to hold, that's usually the operative spot for it. I don't see any reason for it to hold yet. <clears throat> By the way, check this out. The 21.3 chart, everything was passed when I went long, and then... You know, when you got that second divergence on the other chart, this is the chart where it came from. So, anyway, I kind of like this chart. And we have now made a pivot stop out of the bottom on a 21.3 chart, which could catch an overrun on the mid band and what, what over here. Give me two seconds, guys. I'm going mic silence for a second.
Hi right, guys, I'm back. Sorry. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. Looks like they're not stopping. You know, they did not really finish the business they were supposed to finish to the upside. You know, whenever they don't finish the business to the upside and you pull back to areas like this, I don't know about you guys, but it makes me think, you know, it makes me think that any short trades that I'm about to take right here are a trick. And they're going to end up being short-lived because it's going to end up putting in divergence and then go finish the business to the upside like it was supposed to. Um... So for me, it makes it hard for me to pull the trigger on shorts as quickly as I probably should. Just because I'm waiting for them to put the trick on. And again, I guess, look, you know, if there's no divergence ahead of time, you can maybe take a short. Um, when there's divergence in front of your short makes it a little more difficult um, you know again this is a pretty pretty good look for a short for all intents and purposes there's no reason uh, to believe that it's not going down anymore Just with divergence, um, you know, traditionally trend trades that are into the small triggers going up um, are very difficult. Oh, scratcher. You know, so, you know, again, if you went short, um, you know, it kind of forces you to manage your position when you pull back to your small triggers. Because if you can't get through them, you know, and again, this is especially true after divergence and the small triggers roll up. If you can't get through them, then it's not really going. Uh, once you close below them, then it will usually go. Um, and again, you kind of put yourself into, you know, so let's just say like this. Um, you would put yourself into a very late position but you'd actually have a close below your triggers and it would give you a, you know, usually gives you a better chance. Um, and if you never close below your triggers then you don't really get a short trade. So anyway, I will do it a little bit late. And again, if I get a second divergence, obviously, um, it's going to be trickery and tomfoolery. Yeah, look at that. Uh, <laughs> this is what I was talking about when I was talking about them not finishing the business and short trades having a little more. Tr I mean, I guess you got to do it anyway, but now that we've had two divergences and the second one higher, um, my thoughts of getting through these triggers and, you know, again, no more short thoughts basically. Um, not that it can't go down, but, you know, I'm really having thoughts of the continuation to the upside and then finishing the move off up to the 75 area, uh, if they're going to do it. So, mm-hmm. <sighs> So where are we at? 6,100. I'm just trying to make sure I'm, I'm at 5,900. Damn it. All right. <laughs> I'm kind of hovering around that six grand on the day. White paint bar up. Everything is like. Eh. 
obviously this is going to be a key area for us um, so I've been watching this um, and again I want you guys to check this out I've been testing this out you don't have to do this but watch I've been buying a breakout of the large triggers so do you understand what I'm saying so I'm anticipating us finishing the business and I'm essentially saying look I like the white paint bar but I really want to close above my triggers um, so I'm going to basically buy a breakout of all the triggers with the thought process that we were going to go finish our business to the upside um, it's a little bit of a different way of doing it and again it may not uh, it may not always work um, you know I've also found that if you get like a bar down after this usually this is where um, you can add one on and obviously we've got a little high volume area there anyway I'm not going to add one on you know what let's add one on anyway it's only a couple points of risk on the second half eh. alright well there goes my breakout that sucks <laughs> doesn't it anyway maybe not the exact best spot for that but That looks bad. Anyway, maybe not the exact perfect spot to do that from. Uh, but I've done a bunch of those today and I've won most of those trades. Um, but they were all coming from a better bottom. This is not a good enough bottom to do that from. So that was my mistake on that one. But if you had a good bottom, I think it's a really nifty way of... Uh, kind of taking advantage of what we know to be a good bottom and then you know if it's a white paint bar breaking out of the large triggers great um, but sometimes it's not a lot of times it's not and again I posted in a bunch of these pictures already today a couple of them but and again this was pivot stop out at fibs and then closing above and I bought a little pullback Anyway, the one I showed you didn't work, but I I was missing the good bottom. Um, this is the same idea, the close above, which I missed, or I got in late, and then I added one on on a pullback. Same idea. And again, coming from a good bottom was the most important part of that. Um, and you can kind of see right here was the same idea. A good bottom, closing above the triggers and you get that first push and then obviously a better bottom with a pivot stop out and then the same closing above that's a much better look of what I was trying to convey over here which again you know hopefully we'll take it more as a lesson than anything else but that look works well but this is the bottom that sucks to do it from so Mm -hmm. All right, questions, comments, concerns, things you guys want to go through? All right, so I'm gonna do it one more time with a breakout above. Maybe I'm maybe I'll be wrong, but maybe it's a bias that I have that we're going up. If I lose it again, then I lose it again. But again, look, same thought process. 
This one's technically white paint bar closing above every trigger on the planet. Everybody okay with that? Again, you know, if you want to take 10 points, 10 points never hurt anybody. If it goes up 10 points. action after the white paint bar huh? let's see if we can get a little push anybody decide to go long or no not in your wheelhouse Anyway, this is a very market flow, very, uh, oh, we got a new one-to-one -one that popped up. Yeah, I hate that. Mm-hmm-hmm. Hmm. Do I need to manage with that one-to-one? -one? The answer is probably yes. Come on. I'd like to pop on up through 56 and then I'll feel a lot better about it. Just pop on through. And again, we're still not in a great bottom. I'm kind of going on the... Uh, it's going to look really bad with this new one to one that popped up if that thing ends up killing the market. I think we're going to go finish the business, but I think is a horrible thing in day trading. I'd say it's 50-50 right here. That damn large chart, one-to-one -one popping up, really put the perturb on me. And we got divergence on our small chart. It's like... <laughs> Get out, break even, and be done with it. Outbreak even, Gary. All right. Break even's not bad, Gary. <clears throat> I'm just looking at my market flow chart. That's the only thing that's keeping me in because I've got high volume line helping me out and I've got this overwhelming opinion that we're going up to finish business. So I've got my risk reduced now below the high volume line and the market flow signal. So I guess I gave it a shot one way or the other. It's got a chance if it's going to go. Steve, you took 2.75. All right. I'd like to get 10 at least. On half. Man. 
it's like <laughs> so do you guys understand this I mean I was leaning very heavily on the market flow here to help me out and so far so good we'll see if it finishes or if it fails but Somebody else is going to have to see some buying opportunities other than us. Definitely a little bit slower in the afternoon, isn't it? Gives us a little more time to think about it and kind of talk about it. I do have to say I'm a little bit tired because I've been there horsing around all day long, but So, mm -hmm -hmm. looks like the old large chart's going to end up winning out. If we don't stop right here, right now, and go back up, um, we're not going to. this large charge just too much to freaking get past I mean it's supposed to still go up I think they just bamboozled the stops down there but I don't know what to say if you want to do it again great I've lost a couple hundred bucks a contract which means I have to stop so I am done trading Actually, I was done trading anyway. I turned off my, I guess my take profit traders were off anyway, so I wasn't really trading live anyway after I rebooted my Ninja Trader. <laughs> so I didn't make her win or lose any of that. That's awesome. So my take profit trader days are stuck at 5,500 each. That's a good day. Uh, God bless it. That's just rude for them to do that. That's some early morning rudeness right there. They put it on us in the afternoon. Did anybody go long again? Or is anybody long? 
I'm curious. I really debated moving my stop down below the triggers and, and I was like, I'm going to be done. So you can see now we've broken out, um, you know, again, this is where we have the momentum on our market flow chart again. Um, so again, you can uh, potentially have more buys. Um, you may not even get down bars at this point because once we broke out, um, a lot of times they just come back to the triggers and the prior high volume area and then go. So unfortunately, this was our buy spot. This was the bullshit. This was the go again if you wanted to go again right spot right here. And now they need to keep on going, but you can see we've got small triggers getting through over here, which is good. We got one down over here, which is good. So that should be take another one I don't have my take profit traders going anymore but this should be where we get another one from right here we'll go with it and again if we if and when we get to 6175 obviously we're gonna have to watch out if they take out a high volume line again, I quit. All right, I'm glad I'm not on. Like I said, I have my copiers off because I am done for the day. They're just ticking around in here. The one down is just too much right now. They're just they're going two or three down every time and then going up. Minus five. Yeah. I wish I could say I felt really good about it going up now, but I don't feel as good as I once did. You know, once they were staying above the one-to-ones, I was feeling pretty good about it. To get back below them, it's like... Again, we got more market flow signals. You know, if you want to do it again, that's your chance. Just not a lot of momentum on the big chart to be doing it. So we should go up to 75 though. So again, you know, this is where, you know, again, look, closing above small triggers, closing above the other triggers. Is it worth a shot with the anticipation that we're going to go up here? Um, you know, again, if this is not, not in your wheelhouse, then it's okay. I understand. I just think it's chip chopping around too much here. Thought is that it should go up. And it should, you know, again, we're operating on the thought of they didn't finish the business up here to the fib. And usually after the trigger lines roll, especially, uh, we get the market to go finish the business. Um, so that's kind of what we're expecting. I mean, I guess it doesn't always have to happen. And if it doesn't, then it doesn't. But usually once the triggers roll, this is where we're headed. And if it doesn't happen, you know, again, I mean, I guess it doesn't happen, but that's what's normally supposed to happen anyway. And I've made a mess of trying to get in twice. So, we're just, again, not a lot of momentum. Probably could have got a little better entry pulling back into the small triggers. 
so I'm probably in two or three points too high. But if they go up to 73 or 75, then all will be forgiven. Um, Jay, how come we don't see reversal yellow bars on the market flow anymore? Um, I turned them off. So if you want to see them, just go into your indicators and go to the market flow and check the box that says plot yellow paint bar. And you'll see them. <sighs> isn't it easier just to watch this chart and say look this is what's supposed to happen and then we won't even watch this small chart make it easy on us again I probably could be in a little bit better closer to 51 or 52 but so I think I'm in a few points too high but like I said, if they run up to where they're supposed to go, then all will be forgiven. Um, and Jay, you know, on things like crude oil and uh, the S&P, yellow paint bars may be beneficial. Um, but when you get a 21 range bar, you know, it only, cause, it only takes a few dots to actually make uh, a yellow reversal bar and there's so many yellow dots uh, so many dots on a 21 range bar that it makes it very difficult um, alright guys decision time at pivot stop outs and one to ones and all kinds of trouble and mess do you want to go to break even do you want to take some money do you want to try to hang on for a home run um, <laughs> what do you want to do? I'll let you guys call it. Hang on, TTFM. Uh, but I told you we're supposed to go to 73, so. How about if we TTFM right here at 9 or 10 points? Is that better? And then we'll go to break even. And, you know, again, like I said, if they do what they're supposed to do, they're going to make it. And now, look, we've broken out of here. So, anyway. It's a really good example of what's supposed to happen. And like I said, if they actually do it, then all will be forgiven. If they make it up there. That's a little better, right? 26 and 41 ticks. I like it. Gary, you missed it? Don't put that on your tombstone, man. Oh, look at that. We'll buy some more. Get a pullback to some one-to-ones. We can buy some more. We can do it now, risk-free. Make a little extra. That was a gratuitous bounce. Come on. Get your ass up there, you crazy market. Don't make that second divergence. Uh, uh, I don't like that exit at all. Shit. 
God bless it. I really hate to be out. I'm going to get back in and get the rest of that money. <laughs> I mean, it says it's going to go. It's like, give me the rest of my money. There we go. Now I got the rest of it. I had to get back in to get the rest of it. Whew. Try to shortchange me. And now, guess what? It's still going to keep going. Um, there's no reason for it to stop. So, taking the money there at 74 was cute, but it didn't say that was the spot anymore. Did it? So, there was more meat on the bone. Anyway, good stuff. Now the question is, the debate, are we going to make it to 88? Um, if we get a one down, again, we're kind of trading against divergence, because if we get divergence, then the party is going to be over. So it's like, it has to go right away, or it's not going to go. I'll give it two shakes, but... Anyway, this one's a little bit tougher because we're doing it into kind of a fib. Not really a fib that should hold, but if we get one more up bar here, we'll have an up signal outside the outer band, which will propel us to the upside. So again, limited risk. If it doesn't go right now, it's not going. That's my two bars down, so. Alright. Divergence from Fibs. Party over. They should come back to 68. And the reason I say 68 is because that's your high volume area. But. If you're going, you know, again, when you look at it beforehand... I don't know if they're going to make it or not, but if they do make it, it's going to be a really nice tail, assuming they stopped. I think I missed it. Anyway, I think I missed it. So the thought process is with the large chart, we're still going up. Because of the divergence on the little chart, I was trying to get closer to the 68 area, uh, which is the high volume area, the bottom of fibs. And again, I think 68 is going to be our line in the sand. Um, but look, if we get, if we go down to 68 and then we run up to, 88 it's another 20 points assuming it happens so there's still a lot of a lot of money to the upside assuming that they're going to keep going up uh, my guess is that they're going to have to get down here though they may not So, let me show you what I'm doing. You see the high volume line down here? Essentially, I'm trying to buy the high volume line slash pivot stop out slash bottom of the fibs. Yeah, that may be it. <laughs> uh, that might have been it. Yeah, I missed it by a couple ticks. Tag them it.
I debated buying just a little bit higher and just keeping the stop below that just in case but Mm -mm -mm. You guys want to pay a little extra? See if we can get it. All right. It's either going to go really quick up and we're going to have really quick success with this or or not. So don't have to risk a lot of money. You can even get to break even once you get to a high volume area. If they don't rip to that high volume area, they're not going to go. So, it's do or die right here, right now. Party time. Everybody okay with this? Again, I wanted a few ticks lower, but I said, hey, we better pay a couple extra ticks because of the look. And, you know, here's the other part. You can always take 100 bucks off if you want. I mean, there's no harm in... 150 bucks. You don't have to go for home run. So watch. I'll take 130 bucks. Get to break even plus a tick. Now it's a free ride. I can just relax. If it makes it, cool. If it doesn't, no big deal. That feels better, doesn't it? So one big explosion up to 88, and then you guys can all go home for the afternoon. We'll be done with our day. That's what I'm thinking. We've had some fun though, haven't we? I think in the afternoon. I kind of like the little bit slower, you know, no crazy freaking nightmare speed. So I've made a couple mistakes, right? I made that one trying to buy a break out of a large trigger without a little better bottom. Um, second time obviously worked out a whole heck of a lot better. Um, we had a really good lesson on finishing the business, right? That was nice. And then strong markets and us working our way up towards uh, prior highs and pivot stop outs and all kinds of good stuff up there and again we've already taken half off so again they've done this a lot on the nasdaq haven't they you guys notice that today with a couple of small exceptions i've used bigger stops and got my stops out of the way you know i had the uh i had the yips a little bit going just a little too tight with things Oh, come on now. Don't take the fun out of our party. So there's a one down to right there. So that should propel us up. Right about now. Any old second. <laughs> or maybe not. Well, they might not make it. Alright, mid band, do your thing and hold and run us back up there and finish the move off and then we'll be done with it. Now watch, they're gonna go get that high volume line that I wanted at sixty eight. If they do, then you can buy it again down there. Oh, that's just rude. Man, oh man. Well, all right. So watch. Keep your eye on 68 if they make it. 
This is where they do the little one-two on everybody, stop everybody out, ruin their day, get to the high volume line that you thought they were going to get to the first time. Do you guys want to be assertive at it? What do you think? Is it in your wheelhouse? And <laughs> With a signal, they're probably going to go from right there. That's just rude. Rude. I think I got the low freaking tick. Hmm. Well, market we we got some money out of it. We just didn't get all of our money. Tag nabbit. I got tricked. Just a little little freaking too tight. You're off the coast for a while. Alright. Off to the coast. Very nice. Always nice on the coast. So look, we've had a white paint bar up. Um, you know, sometimes you can use the white paint bar up as a an excuse to go long and get the rest of your money. Um, if it starts making down signals, then you usually don't get your money. So you don't have to necessarily risk a lot. It usually goes pretty quickly. Anyway, a little second chance at the second half. Nine points worth or so. Let's see if it finishes the move off. I guess we just don't want a third divergence, do we? Really just want it to go and finish the move off because of our white paint bars up and Testing my patience. Mm -hmm. All right, now they should just go sprawl out of here and run up. <laughs> I'm giving them ideas. You know, if you talk to it, it works better. All right, now we've got high volume lines. It could probably reduce the risk. And I don't know what our other number was over there, but I know we had a pivot stop out up here, so it's probably time to get pretty tight on your business I'll sell one and I'm gonna get my stop way up all right anyway we got the rest of it we had to do it in two bites you know we did this first one where we took some and it got bumped out break even plus a tick and then we got white paint bar long and we got up to here and that's Good enough for me. 
tired of the snow yeah yeah we're moving into full springtime here it's 80 80 degrees and sunny and 66 overnight it's beautiful just waiting for that water to warm up a little bit getting off the boat in the cold water doesn't feel good yet Uh, well, the market's behaving quite nicely, actually, in the afternoon. I might have whisked out on a stop or two, but other than that, it's done. Uh, it's done what it's supposed to do pretty well. Didn't finish the business. Finished the business. Kept the business going, and now we've got the mother load of a top potentially. There's lots of reasons, anyway, for it to stop here. We'll see if it actually does or not. That's your 91 is your outer band on your 34 range, too, so. Anyway, 72 in Chicago. Yeah, my brother said it was 94 in Dallas yesterday. He said, that's hot for February. Brutal. All right, so now look, we're in between fibs and one to ones with weak triggers, um, which really is going to make it difficult to do anything uh, very conservative. Man, I guess there was a little more meat on that bone, though, wasn't there? You know, you just never know when you get to. I mean, look, I'm happy getting out at an area like that. Um, if they break them, I say, hey, good for them. Nice job. Um, and they did. They broke it. And, you know, now look, we have a one down. We have to decide, is there enough momentum with a one down to take another long trade and try to get to the next fib? So one down and then one up and we can reduce our risk. And again, it's very quick. But if it keeps on going, then it keeps on going. So, anyway, for what it's worth, see if they got it in them. And again, if you want to take some off, you can along the way. There's never hurts anybody to take a hundred bucks or so. So that we'll take 100 bucks on some, and then we'll go to break even. And if they keep going, great. And if not, free ride. What do you think? We're just at resistance on my 21.3 chart, too. And every time I get weak triggers with resistance on my 21.3 chart, it makes me a little nervous. That's why I took a hundred and got to break even. If it keeps going, great, cool. But if not, that was my rationale for taking a hundred and chickening out. That uh, twenty-one three chart fibs work quite well, actually. Anyway, we need more up bars now, or the party's over. Oops. All right. Party's over for me. Anyway, if you're just trading these charts without a 21.3 chart, then you would still be long. Um, or out with diversions. But anyway, I have it in my vision and I can see it. So that's why I'm using it. And 100 and a break even works for me. It's not a lot of money, but it's still 100. All things being equal, we'll pro 
probably keep going all the way up to the next fibs on these charts. May have to, with divergence, pull back to the mid band or, you know, get a little bit lower. Or not. Uh, did anybody go long? I'm just curious. Again, it's a perfect, this was the spot. Um, I think it's a perfect one down, one up spot. You know, whenever you look at your market flow chart, if you can have one to ones that help out, really, I think is very, very helpful. Um, and believe it or not, these one to ones would also help out with the mid band if we get back to it. So that's why I have this box. That's kind of the mid band area. So if we do make it, the mid band may hold because of those one to ones. All right, so there is the spot. And we have a white paint bar down into it, which also means, you know, a lot of times that, uh, again, I know we have that 21.3 chart kind of haunting us, but usually if you get to the one-to-ones and you have a white paint bar down into them, into your mid-band, as long as you don't make down bars so you know again you can be pretty tight on this because if it doesn't go right now right here and make up bars then it's not going to so it's basically mid band trend trade uh, has to go you know the only thing it's against is my 21 3 chart um, but as far as these charts go it's not against it so Anyway, it depends on your perspective. Mm -hmm. All right, now make an up bar here quick and then we'll have a stop below the low. And if it does run, we'll get 15 out of it. If it doesn't, then that would be the end of the party. They're really struggling to get that last tick, aren't they? All right, so we have a signal. So we have a stop. So again, I mean, look, it's three and a half points risk for 15. So we've got a five to one risk reward ratio here. So um, again, as we trade back into, if we have any trouble, you know, is reduce the risk. Everybody okay with this one? <clears throat> again we're able to reduce risk because if we have a second divergence that'll be the end of the party but I'd imagine that we won't even so much as get down bars and get below here or else it'll probably be over if it doesn't just keep going then we're going to end up with party over quick
And again, look, if you want to take a hundred, all right, there's your hundred. I missed it. <laughs> Actually, a hundred was a little bit lower, but. Mm -hmm. All right, I wasn't going to risk any money on that. I want you guys to look at this. This is where the hundred was. Right there. So you can see why I was making a case for a hundred right there and not risking any more money. Anyway. If you don't use a 21-3 chart, then you don't use a 21-3 chart. But if you do, then it's kind of hard to ignore it right there. Anyway. Still very, you know, possible for us to get to 96, which is the outer band, and then get a market flow signal and then really go finish the move. Um, and 96 would be more beneficial because number one, it's one to ones on not only the 21 three chart, but it would be your outer bands too. So across the board. Now to get a signal, again, you can put a buy stop above a market, right? So again, if we get a signal, then we know what's what. And if we don't get a signal, then it's really party over. You guys okay with this? Outer band, one to ones. If we get a signal, we'll see if we can get to 15. This is basically the last attempt at this bad boy. <laughs> it has to go or it's not going. It's going to be quick one way or the other. I have a feeling. And I think this will be my last trade for the day. So one way or the other. If it wins, fantastic. And if it loses, then that's the end of that. So. Yeah. Don't lose that quickly. Notice how we got back inside the outer bands, which I don't like anymore. So that is not super beneficial for the party. I've got some work to do to make it more fun. If you guys were staring at my 21 3 chart, you would never do this trade. That's the problem. When to ignore it and when not to. Um, now, we need to get through these silly HVA lines. Um, if we don't, then we won't keep going. If we do, then that's going to be a good sign. And look, there's your 120 bucks at a pivot stop out. If you want it, you could take it, 140 bucks. And then now you're basically in a free trade. It either finishes the move or you don't lose any money since you took 140 bucks. So, what do you guys think? Pretty cool. Little market flow signal from the outer band. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. It's nice when they do. Now let's go see if they can just throttle on through and hit 15 and then we can call it a day. <clears throat> what do you guys think about the afternoon? Did you like it? Just curious. I mean, I guess it's the same thing either way, but it's a little slower, maybe easier to follow in the afternoon. And by the way, I did record it. So if you want to go back and look at it, I'm not sure if I want 
the recording out there in the world we'll find out but Come on, Leonardo. <clears throat> How did it go today? Oh, well, you guys tell me what do you think? How'd it go? I think it went pretty damn well. KM 95 to 12. Nice. I like it. All right, so we hit another target. That was nice. And again, look, this one was, and I see what you were doing. You were buying on the way down, weren't you? Just into that area. So anyway, that's a really good look on, you know, the 34 range chart for going up too. We may actually go to 26. That's the next fib area. I was happy with 15, but we may actually go to 26 before it's all over. Anyway, 15 made me happy. And you know, the other thing, what I was talking about, remember our first trade that we did um, where we went long here and we talked about taking 100 and then get into break even quick? So this trade, this chart really helped me with the management of that trade. Um, and then when we were doing the trade from the outer band, you know, the one to one on this chart helped out a lot too. So anyway, I like this chart. You know, some people don't like to have too many charts, but when it helps, I think it's very helpful. When you have areas that help or strong triggers that help. Anyway. All right, guys. Um, you can call tech support if you don't know how to fix it. I'll help you out. And again, you got to keep in mind, I mean, I did have to redo my charts today. So, you know, the, look, with NinjaTrader 8, especially with the multi-threading, I have found that the charts are very sensitive and um, it's really a good idea to delete your charts and remake new workspaces for yourself on a regular basis. Um, I have found that uh, it's not necessarily, it's not next gen. We don't control the workspaces, Jay. That's a Ninja Trader thing. We don't have any control over the workspace. So the workspace files have a tendency to get corrupted after you use them for a while. I don't know why. You can call Ninja Trader and ask them, but I don't know. They won't give you an answer, so it doesn't really matter. So the best thing to do is just go file new you know from a blank workspace rebuild all your charts and traditionally that's the best way to do it is just wipe everything out and start over it takes about three minutes to do absolutely yeah and that's what I do too is I make backups of my workspaces so you know, I have my workspace and then I have backups of them. And then I'll use, you know, if one goes bad, I'll use the backup. And then I have backups of the backups. And then I have zip copies of them saved. So, anyway, like I said, we're probably still going up. Obviously, at 15, I was happy. Um, not a lot says we're slowing down yet, so... There may be more party to the upside. 26 was the number. And then the old 47 again. But 26 is first on the range chart. 
Anyway, Jay, you know how to remake your workspaces, right? All right, I'm going to stop all over.